Hey all, Diplo here. So first impressions do count, and for all of the power that Cubes puts in our hands, it also comes at the cost of training, learning, and for many of us also frustrations and a sense of powerlessness while we're still adapting into the Cubes way of thinking and its specific particularities. And this is what I've learned uh, by talking to some users and also experienced myself, even though I had come from Linux before going into Cubes. So in this talk, I'll present to you some of the challenges in learning cubes that I've identified um, in the context of my master's dissertation and the solution that I'm proposing and is still in development, which is an integrated onboarding tutorial. So I'd like to start off uh, with a bit of an exaggerated experience of someone learning cubes. And so at this point, they have cubes installed and they've gone already through the whole process of installing uh, it, which, or for example, finding hardware, uh, which may already have decreased a bit of their confidence. So here we see the, the evolution of confidence over time, and the user boots the operating system for the first time, and they open certain cubes and certain applications, they play around with it, uh, with the menu, which is the most uh, visible part, I would say, and they keep doing it, they open some other cubes and they explore what they have there, the applications that they have, and they feel powerful because cubes uh, does, does give that, that sense. But quickly they get a warning message saying not enough RAM. And this may come as a surprise for some, maybe not for others, but um, it may take it, the user a bit of time until they can find the cubes widget or uh, the domains widget or for example the cube manager in order to shut down the currently running cubes. And then their confidence goes a bit down as they're trying to install uh, the software because it may not be immediately obvious how to do that. So maybe they go to documentation or maybe they are a bit frustrated and try to um, install it like a regular Linux system, uh, which apparently works. They use the terminal to install it and they feel, they feel confident. And only for that confidence to go downhill because once they restart the system, it disappears. And at this point, many users may be like this. So currently only with much perseverance and lots of documentation reading, and even some scary uh, looking terminal actions, um, can one go over the initial bump that allows us to access all of the cubes features. But cubes is extremely powerful and extremely necessary. And there are non-technical users um, who happen to also be vulnerable users that really need the security of cubes and so they need cubes to be a tool of empowerment for them and these are people who need a system that is secure um, that they can use to carry out the work that they do without too much frustration and ideally without having to go through extensive training courses and this is currently being tackled from multiple fronts for example on the usability side uh, nina and marta are currently working on redoing the cubes menu uh, into something that is much more usable and that kind of introduces the user onto uh, thinking about how Cubes works internally. And that's, that's an excellent effort and I think it will pay off. Uh, also on the documentation side, documentation has uh, been very welcomed by a lot of people and compared to other projects, it's incredible but it still needs um, some changes and I'll t uh, talk about uh, them later. And also on the training side, for example, on YouTube or on video platforms, there aren't a lot of uh, cube specific videos that are built by community members. So generally only from reviewers. And this is something that really needs to happen, especially on the latest version of cubes. And also on the training side, the Freedom of the Press Foundation has been doing some incredible work in onboarding users. And so before I started uh, working on the particular solution of an onboarding tutorial, uh, before I even knew I wanted to work on that, I did some uh, research. I interviewed six uh, community members 
uh, who were already using cubes to understand the basic learnability challenges they had when they were getting into cubes, specifically uh, the challenges and the solutions, uh, like for example, where they found um, the solution. So on the first days, or I mean the first time that people were using cubes, uh, three out of the six participants uh, described being confused. And this can be explained, or there was a quote from one of the participants that said that the first time they, put it, they were uh, in the system and they could see that there were the default app, uh, app VMs, but they didn't have a clue of what to do. And this is ex exactly the kind of frustration that I'm trying to ease with the onboarding tutorial. Uh, there were other three classes of issues that users experienced and that I've coded into the interview. Namely, learning the mechanics, um, installing software or installing Windows even, or copying files and copying the clipboard across VMs was not immediately obvious and they had to refer to external resources to find how to do that. Also, changing workflows was the challenge. Um, for example, uh, defining their con compartmentalization strategy and like which, which cubes to create, which ones to change and also how to stick to that compartmentalization because one thing is to create, to set the, the list of, comp of compartments, another one is to actually using it every day. And lastly, uh, there were also challenges regarding to the mental model formation. So for example, one user uh, described that advice for a future user of cubes would be not to have a mental model of a traditional desktop, like erasing what you know and starting from scratch. And this mental model issue uh, has to do with the fact that cubes requires a mental model of a hypervisor. So in a typical system there on the left, that's the menu and you have applications that you open directly. Whereas in cubes on the right, you open f uh, applications within a specific cube or within a specific compartment. And this is a different way of thinking. And it also translates into the closing of applications. In a regular system, closing the application is just closing the window that it's in. Whereas in cubes, in most situations, you need to close the window and also shut down the cube when you no longer uh, need any of the applications that it's running. So a very different way of thinking about it. Regarding where people solved or found the solutions for the issues, um, the documentation was uh, referenced by all of them. And here we can see a word cloud of how many participants preferred each terms. So uh, there were also videos uh, and some online forms. And uh, regarding the documentation, um, I wanted to mention that um, the current version of documentation is written, written as a reference material and it's highly regarded as a good reference material by a lot of people. Um, but as you can see there on the right, since it's reference material, there are a lot of uh, links. So each, each node is a page and each edge is a link from one page onto the other. And navigating the current documentation, uh, I think, there is a great quote from a participant of the study which said uh, it's written from the perspective of you know what you're doing and usually the time that you're looking for documentation is when you don't. So when people are already experienced with cubes, it's an excellent resource. Um, and so there needs to be some sort of other documentation that is more progressive and takes the user from knowing nothing into knowing how to do basic things. And there is a link there for a discussion on the forum into creating exactly this kind of resource. And also regarding the documentation, we know from research that users prefer to learn by doing and that trial and error is much more frequent than going into a manual. And this leads us to the idea of making an integrated onboarding tutorial. Uh, for example, uh, this is one of the earlier approaches to doing this that is documented in academia and this uh, is called the contextual procedural tutorial and it's a series of overlaid uh, sticky notes that point exactly to where the user is supposed to click. And 
this is also uh, shown throughout the web in many in many websites that require a bit uh, a bit more complex interaction and even on the cubes forum and compared to paper tutorials at least in this in this paper they found out that users made fewer errors and spent on average 26 percent less time learning which is quite significant and Onboarding interactive tutorial is exactly what I propose as the solution or one of the solutions for improving the learnability of cubes. So I had three goals in mind. Firstly, to introduce the user to basic actions on cubes. Secondly, uh, build the mental model for the user to kind of break that expectation that you just open applications and instead you open applications within cubes and you need to shut down those cubes. That was my goal. And also make it something short because once the user is getting started on the system, they, they probably don't want to go through an extensive uh, tutorial. So keeping it as short as possible probably make it more effective. And this means that we can't include everything uh, in there, like installing software, but that will be added as an extra tutorial, possibly in the future, but it's still outside of the scope of this. Um, so now I'm going to show you what the prototype looks like. And keep in mind, that this is just a prototype, so there is no code behind this, it's just a series of images. So when the user, the user first boots into cubes, they are presented with this welcome screen, that explains a bit about cubes and it stresses the fact that cubes is quite different from other systems and they highly nudge the user into doing the tutorial but the user always has the choice of skipping it so learning the basics the user clicks here and firstly they're introduced to the idea of the compartments so they have the personal compartment the work the vault and the entrusted these are the default ones and then we also mention what a cube is, that the cube is actually just a compartment. And we don't mention anything about the virtual machine because uh, this way we keep it abstract for the user, which is the way cubes is going. So then the user clicks, I get it. And we introduce the user to the mission, which is to copy a file from the work cube onto the personal cube. Here we use the colors to uh, relate to the previous one, but users can always click there to see the previous one if they want to remem remind themselves what these cubes are. And we assure the user that we'll guide them through the whole process. So then the user is ready and they get to the task one, which is to open the file explorer on the word cube. And so here um, they, like you see here on the bottom right, something for them to always exit the tutorial if they need. But the user is supposed to be click here on the cube menu and then on uh, work and within work they select files. Uh, this takes a bit of time to load because uh, it's loading a bit heavy images but then the user clicks here. As you can see there is a hotspot a thinking thing which shows you where you're supposed to click and now it tells you that uh, we have to wait for the cube to start and this is introducing the idea that uh, a cube is somehow related to a computer, so it takes more time just opening applications. Then we go on to the second task, which is to do the same thing for the personal uh, cube. So again, we open the cubes menu, select personal, and then within personal, we select files. Once it loads, there you go. And again, it's taking some time to start. And we're doing this in order for the user to see clearly two different file systems, or at least give the user the chance to notice that they are slightly different and that there are some colored borders, they, they probably mean something. Um, so let's just wait for the cube to start. And then we tell the user that each cube is isolated. And we point to the fact that they have different files. So then we click OK. The tutorial is a, bit, a little bit slow on this part because it's loading a lot of assets. So, but that's just a prototype. Then we talk about the importance of the color borders. We say that it has security implications and that the cube's name is always there in, within brackets. Then the user clicks, I understand. And they get the third task, which is to copy the picture onto the personal cube. 
And this is the part where most, uh, most participants found it odd because they expected just to drag and drop like a regular system, but that's not currently implemented. So they f just follow what the tutorial tells them. Right click on the picture and copy onto another app VM. And now the prototype is a, bit of, a little bit slow again, but this is where we introduce the user to what a DOM zero um, prompt for permissions is. So for example, we call it here the administrator prompt, a prompt and we say that when a cube wants to do something onto another cube, this shows up and the administrator cube has uh, the gray color and they have DOM zero there. And we also call out to the fact that this, uh, this thing is important, the color is important. Uh, no other cube would be able, for example, to, to spoof this. And then the user gets taken to the real screen uh, where they select personal as a target. Of course, in the real system, they would be able to type as well. And then, okay. Then they see it copying and it lands on the cube's incoming folder shortly. Okay, as you can see here, we say that it lands on the cubes incoming. In a previous iteration, we had the user go in there and see that the file is actually there, but we'll leave that up to the user. If they want to explore it in the tutorial, they're free to do so. They only go on to the next step when they uh, do the correct action. So last task is to shut down the cubes. And here we do a little trick. Uh, we kind of trick the user into closing the windows in the expectation that that's all they need to do. And this thing should have popped up earlier. So close the windows, let's close it all so we, we don't need that anymore. The user goes here, is expecting this to be what they need to do. And apparently it's not enough. Um, they have to manually shut down each cube when it's not needed. And there is always the risk that the user thinks that in order to copy a file, they need to open the cube, copy a file and shut it down. But my hope is that uh, they don't make that association. It's just that when they no longer need it, they shut it down. So they go here, select the personal cube and shut it down. And then they do the same for work. And this is again to stress the idea that a cube is something that you start and something that you shut down instead of just being applications that you open because the user needs to manage these things when using cubes, at least currently. And then the mission is done. Uh, the user knows a bit about how to get around cubes and then they can explore more tutorials. And this is the part um, where it has kind of like expansion, expansion packs, just the, um, as you will see, uh, each tutorial is just a tutorial definition file so other people can expand upon this and make their own ones. And for example, organizations can create their own sets of tutorials for um, the, the employees or the beneficiaries. So here it just shows that this is the next tutorial and they can either to choose to play or skip, or for example, see more tutorials. And if there is anyone, any one tutorial that they want to do, they just click on it. And that's about it, at least from the prototype part. The current progress is um, I started off by brainstorming um, about the contents of the tutorial. I designed a curriculum and I extracted what was the most basic things that I thought people should know about. And as you saw there in the tutorial, it was the opening of applications. It was the introduction to the meaning of what the, board, the colored borders meant. I also used the opportunity to show that file systems are different. And then I talked about what DOM zero prompts are. And um, then I also taught the users how to uh, shut down each cube. And that was it. That was the basic tutorial. Um, then I implemented that into the, the platform that you just saw, which is called Figma. And I did two rounds of feedback with four to six users in each. So they test the prototype and they were all able to conclude the tutorial. 
without any help. Um, but there were still some things to polish and I implemented the feedback on the next version. And what you saw was the last version of it after these two rounds. And I'm halfway into the code's implementation of this. So regarding the architecture, um, most of it will be implemented in DOM0, which is the privileged virtual machine. And a tutorial is basically a series of steps with conditions. For example, if you do this, you go on to the next one. So it would make sense to have a file, a tutorial definition file there on the left, uh, where all of the steps and all of the correct actions are loaded. And then the, the, the tutorial knows that the user did the correct action by looking at that. And it's constantly getting information from the cube's components and also some log files to see when the user did that action. And when the user goes into a new step, some information, some overlay is shown onto the user. So for example, it can be a modal screen there on the top left, or for example, a hotspot, which shows the user where they should click, or some information about the present task. Um, some challenges uh, on implementing this. The first one is the odd spot, which is uh, where people are supposed to click. This is non-trivial to implement, or at least from what I've experienced, because it is an element, it, it is a window that is supposed to be clicked through and also be attached to other components. So when the components change, these needs to reflect that. And so what I ended up doing is doing uh, something like this, where I've changed the cubes uh, domains widget, for example, here, and added something there that just highlights. And this seems to be working best, at least implementation-wise. I still haven't tested if this is good for users. Then uh, the communication with other comp components is kind of necessary. So for example, there you saw the, cube, the cubes domain. It needs to have some sort of information from the tutorial on when certain parts should be highlighted. And I don't think there is a lot of leeway into this. Um, so this leads necessarily to some high coupling between the components. So the tutorial depending on other components and other components depending on the tutorial. And I've tried to minimize this for non-GUI components. So for example, I'm reading information about uh, changes in the system from log files instead of highly integrating it with, for example, with Cubes daemon. Um, not sure if this is the best approach, but I try to reduce the, the coupling uh, where possible. And lastly, there is also the sysgui, which will be a whole other set of problems because in the, in the future, in a future version of Cubes, DOM0, the uh, pri privileged VM which manages all others, will be isolated from the GUI rendering. And so that will be done on its own cube, which will be sysgui. And probably the tutorial would run there. And that would mean that it would have access to much less information. For example, those log files would probably not be available. And that will have implications on the development of the tutorial. Probably we'll have to use some QR exec policies to inform when something is happening. Um, but this will have to be future work. So the next steps uh, will be finishing the implementation and finally doing a final evaluation, some user testing, possibly remote, where we decide on what's the metric for determining if the tutorial uh, was successful or not. If it increased, for example, the user's ability to learn to use cubes or if it didn't and it shouldn't be implemented or it shouldn't be integrated into the cubes, um, into cubes itself. And I should also add the disclaimer that I'm doing this as, as part of my dissertation work and it won't necessarily get included into cubes. That will be, of course, up to cubes, the cubes team and up to the standards of whatever I develop here. So I lastly would like to thank all of the participants who participated in the study and all of the people that gave feedback, um, especially on the, on the, the issue, on the GitHub issue for this. And this is where you can find me. And you can also follow the progress of the implementation here on the issue below. And that's it.